and Jodie Rose. And actually, the bridges sing all by themselves. What I do is listen to them. Uh, it was 1994. I was at art school and seeing this magnificent bridge being built. I wondered what the cables would sound like. And we had a public art program, which was to imagine anything was possible. What would you do? I said, I would travel around the world and record the sound of bridges and make a global symphony. Uh, in 2002, I made my first trip around the world and I went to Helsinki, uh, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge, and I made recordings with contact microphones that pick up the vibrations so you're actually listening to the sound inside the bridge. So the bridges are singing all the time, but I'm tuning into them and making music. At one point I needed a break, so I went to upstate New York and joined Shuli Chang on her Get Garlic, Go Wireless. It was a fictional after-the-crash scenario where garlic is the new economy, like the new money. And so uh, she got media artists to harvest garlic in upstate New York and then go and trade it on the streets. And people gave us all kinds of fabulous things in exchange for the garlic. <laughs> this is a part of a series of um, compositions I'm making. Uh, using technical drawings to make a visual score to play bridges, and I'll be extending that for a sym symphonic work with bridges all over the world. And um, you can go to www.singingbridges.net if you want to listen to them. I had a radiophonic residency with the ABC Radio in Australia, and I listened to not only the sounds of the bridges, but also the stories and the cultural history and anecdotes of the place. Because I think once you go very deeply into one thing, it opens out a whole world. And this, the Batman Bridge, is actually modelled on the Severin Bridge in Cologne. Um, <laughs> my first ever live performance was to an audience about this big in Club Gloria in Helsinki. Uh, with um, I was playing bridges at Pixel Lake Audiovisual Architecture Festival. And I had a cantile and cello and um, VJ working with me. And it was a kind of weird sort of jazz bridge thing. Um, so I, I had a job guarding this bridge. It was destroyed first in World War II and... No, first in World War I, then World War II. And it was in ruins for 60 years. And so I had to go every day and check that the bridge was still standing. And if it was, my job was done. It was very satisfying. Um, a Swedish engineer wrote to me and said, I'm building a bridge in Bangkok. Would you like to come and play on it? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so he sent his uh, research engineer uh, on site with me for a week and we listened to all different parts of the bridge and they even took me up to the top of the pylon, which was 250 metres in a crane dangling from this. <laughs> this is an, uh, a bridge instrument that an artist in Sydney, Nick Vishart, made for me. And another lovely artist, Samu, is playing it. It's mainly two theremins, um, but also with some bridge samples mixed in. And again, it's another project that I'm developing for a sort of gestural interface to play this archive of sounds. And I have 48 bridges that I've recorded around the world. Um, this one is back in Helsinki, uh, directing a, um, a project called Particle Wave, which was about hybrid radio. So making radio on the street, on the ferry, as you can see there, and trying to send a live stream from the bridge as well, which I'm still working on developing. <laughs> and this is the first ever permanent installation of Sound on a Bridge. It's in Brisbane. Uh, you can listen to Cable 4 and Cable 8 as you walk across the bridge, but you have to be there physically. I tried to get them to stream it, and they were really scared that someone might like reverse engineer the bridge and hack into it if they could hear the sound on the internet. So anyway, uh, it's a nice local kind of project. And as a side kind of meta project, sometimes I just go to festivals and talk. Um, this is at Pixel Lake in 2007, and I had a little conversation lounge set up here on 20,000 euros worth of Alvar Alto furniture. That was very nice. And uh, next to Eric Minkinen's placard headphone festival. The arts. How do you survive is the question I'm asked most often after why bridges. And um, there are many answers, mainly Lots of wishing and lots of friends who help me out now and then. <laughs> a lot of determination and faith and just believing that what you're doing is the most important thing that you could possibly be doing with your life, so you have to keep doing it. <laughs> I met a lovely Danish artist called Sophie Erland in Berlin when I had a residency at Programme Institute for Art and Architecture Collaborations, and she said, I'd like to make a swan song for the Palasta Republic, you know, this building they're pulling down. So we went and made recordings of the demolition process, and again... They made me go and ride in a crane, 50 metres only this time. <laughs> Two Christmases ago, I spent Christmas Day in the snow under a bridge in Ljubljana, 
with some lovely Slovenian artists who we were miking it up and making a concert on the bridge. And then we also made an um, extended cinema performance. They've developed a system where they feed back the sound and video to each other and it becomes this kind of crazy abstract looping thing. This is at the Festival Mala Pixel in Paris last year with Emmanuel Rebu, who made this gorgeous um, abstract instrument and then we played My Sounds through it and Iro Ito, who's doing really beautiful, he programmed PD patches to, again, take the sound and, and work with visuals. <laughs> this is at ISEA in Singapore. This is the most number of engineers I've ever managed to get on a bridge at one time. I think it was 16. And we were doing a site visit to see if we could actually get a crane to lift the sheathing on the cables so that we could hear them, because all the bridges in Singapore were very, very quiet. Um, <laughs> didn't work. Anyway, then I came back to Europe and I was on the Danube for a month with a project called European Sound Delta. Uh, it was 30 sound artists over three months and I joined them in Bratislava and went to Vienna and Linz where we did a live performance with the same Slovenian artists from that snowy bridge and it was during Ars Electronica but we were kind of hacking the festival. So I'm developing a series of postcards. You'll be seeing them soon in museum shops near you and I'm really excited to be here because I'm going to get to play on the the High Bridge, which I'm sure you'll know. And um, I'd like to make a series of high bridges. The other one is the Via Viaduct de Malo in the south of France. <laughs> Stay tuned. Maybe in May, the High Bridge. And tonight, there's a fabulous concert at Soundspace Rondel, where I'm very excited to have landed. Um, there's also a concert on Monday and Friday, and there's a whole matinee series in April, and lots of really exciting, wonderful things going on with creative culture catalyzing and <laughs> recycling and sharing resources and energy and thank you so much for listening go to my website singingbridges.net